Hello everyone, this is Derek with Reef Automation. And in this video, we're gonna go over programming Hydro's outlets and the different types of outlets. Uh, we had a lot of people ask me how to program the Hydro's and it's actually quite simple. Um, and we're gonna go through the different modes and different outlets that you can program and how they interact with everything. So we have a basic system uh, hooked up here. We have a leak detector, pH probe, temp sensor, but we're not gonna go through any of that. We're gonna go through just specifically outlet programming. So if you click on the um, three lines up here, you go to outlets and you'll be, you'll see I'm using the Chrome browser, which is coralviewhydros.com forward slash app forward slash, and that'll actually get you to the uh, Hydros app on your computer. So we'll hit outlets and you can see I already have a couple outlets, but if you wanted to add another outlet, you could just go down here and add one. So we'll call this uh, just test outlet and we'll say create. And then this is where we go into the types, which is what we're going to go over. So there's a number of different types. So the first one we're going to go over is heater. So if you click on heater, you have your on and your off temperature, and this is when it's going to turn on and off the outlet based off of the temperature. This is where you pick your temperature input. Now you can have multiple temperature inputs, so this is where you would click on your specific input that you're using, and in this case would be the temp sensor. This is where you'd click on your output device. In this, way, in this case, we're gonna hit the black outlet three, which is what I labeled one of my outlets. And this is where we pick our modes. Now, you can have a number of different modes. And what this basically means is, do you want this outlet to function during that mode? So if you were to hit feeding mode, or you were to hit normal mode or water change, do you want the heater to be on and off during that time? So in this case, for a heater, it really doesn't matter. I would just click um, active in all the modes. Now, depends on is similar to that of uh, if and else. Um, if something is happening, do you want something else to happen? So, for instance, if my ATO pump was on, then what would you want it to happen? But in this case, if it was off, I would turn it on. If it was on, I would turn it off. And that's basically how the depends on works. You do not have to use the depends on, but it, it would depend on another outlet, essentially. If we enable the advanced settings, um, it's not too advanced, but if the input is unavailable means if it was to lose communication, do you want it to turn off or on the pump? So when we get to the minimum off, maximum off, minimum on, and maximum on times, this essentially will not allow the outlet to switch to an on or off mode for a period of time. Um, on a heater, it could be useful if you don't want your heater to just constantly turn on and off uh, on a specific temperature. For instance, if it was get to 77.4 and it kept fluctuating between 77.4 and 77.5, you can essentially delay the off time. So if it was a minimum off time of a minute, that means it's going to stay off for a minute until something else happens or until it changes its temperature. It's useful. For a heater, like I said, if you don't want it to turn off and on a ton of times. Okay, so the next one we're going to go over is the lights. And there's a couple different ones, um, but they are generally the same up until you get a variable light. So the LED light, fluorescent light, and the metal highlight light is essentially just a label uh, for your light. But they all three of them do the same thing. So if we were to do LED light, which we can go over first, it's going to be the same thing as if we went to fluorescent light or we went to metal halide light. So again, that's just for labeling purposes. So if you had multiple lights, you would know what's what. So the LED light, uh, there is an overheat input, which you don't have to use. Uh, most people aren't going to use this, but if you wanted to, you could put an overheat temperature and that would mean that the LED light potentially is causing your tank to overheat. Generally, you're going to see that more with a metal halide light than an LED light, but it has the ability in which to shut off the light if it was to get a specific temperature. Uh, your output light here, or sorry, your output device is where you pick where you would like the device, similar to that of the heater. In this case, we would do outlet three, or it can be any outlet for your LED light. Active in mode, same as a heater. 
do you want your light to turn on and off based off of a mode? And we're going to skip that. And depends on same thing. If your ATO pump was on, let's say I would like to turn off um, my light. So as you can see, uh, you got to look at the right side first. It'll be off if off, meaning the LED light will turn off if the ATO pump is off. And again, you don't have to use this if you don't want to. So as we get to the more advanced settings, this is where you would set up your timers for the lights. Um, it can be a little bit tricky to understand, but essentially you're going to use the start time and how long you want it to run for. Um, the interval and the run count are really if you wanted to turn off and on your lights throughout the day multiple times. In a general sense, you're not going to do this. So you're just going to have a start time and then how long you want it to stay on. So in this case, it would turn on at 10 a.m. and it would run for 12 hours. And that would be uh, essentially a very basic program for how you want the lights to function. Um, again, maximum on, uh, minimum on, and all the rest of these aren't really going to come into play with lights, but you can use them. And again, that's a delay. So let's say you wanted them to wait 10 minutes or wait 15 minutes till they turn on. You can use these to delay, just similar to the heater. Okay, so that's essentially if you had just a light that you want to turn on and off, very basic. The variable light, however, runs a little bit differently. Now, the variable light is going to ramp up and down throughout the day. Uh, you would use this for you know a 0 to 10 light, um, that you're going to be plugging into the 0 to 10 port. And that's why the output device here is not going to let you use any other outlets other than the 0 to 10. So um, there's a couple different modes that it has. It has a slope, a parabola, and a latitude mode. But the slope mode is pretty simple. It's going to have an amount of time that it takes to go from minimum to maximum level at the beginning of the slope. And then it's going to, after a period of time, it's going to then slope down. And we're going to go through that here at the bottom. All the other settings here are the same, with the exception of all the way at the bottom here, where it says slope. This is how long it's going to take to go from the minimum to the maximum level at the beginning of the runtime, and this amount of time from the end of the runtime. So, for instance, if you hit this at 10 a.m., at 10 a.m., it's going to go to the minimum time and then ramp for 30 minutes to the maximum level. And then since it's 12 hours, after 11 hours and 30 minutes, it's then going to go from max level to minimum level at the slope designated here by the amount of time. So that's what a slope does. Now, if you hit it on parabola, it's going to do it automatically for you. You see there's no setting here. It's going to basically do a minimum to max level based off of the amount of time in the day. Um, I played with this a little bit. Um, but essentially, it's going to be around the same amount of time. It's going to be about 30 minutes, but it takes a little bit longer on the parabola mode. Um, I don't really use it as much. Most people are going to use the slope mode. Now, the latitude mode is pretty neat. It's going to actually do sloping or, or rising and lowering based off of a specific latitude point in the world. So, for instance, if I was to set this to 19.9, it's going to base it off of Hawaii's uh, minimum and maximum slopes uh, of the sunrise, which is really neat. Um, you could use this, and it will just mimic Hawaii, essentially, which is really neat. It has a zenith at the bottom. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that does. I just kept it at 90 degrees. Uh, I believe that has to do with how the sun uh, hits the horizon, but again, uh, I don't think you're going to get that advanced. Um, but that's essentially how the latitude works, and it's pretty neat for the variable light um, uh, feature that's uh, hydro-specific. So if we go to return pump, um, pretty simple. You can have a leak detector, uh, which if the leak detector was to hit, it's going to automatically turn off the return pump. Um, again, you can pick which outlet you want the return pump to be, the active, Depends on, again, same thing as what we went over before. Um, same thing we went over the minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum on and off times. Same thing, you can delay it. You can tell it when you want it to turn off and on. Turn pump's pretty basic. 
Next one's your ATO. Now, um, you can use the ATO that Hydros uh, makes. You can also use their own water level and then pick an outlet device uh, other than their drive port to make your own ATO. So that's what ATO is for. It uses the level input right here. And then your output device can be any outlet. Uh, again, same thing, active uh, depends on all the rest of these are the same uh, for the ATO. Uh, feeder. So um, again, the feeder isn't really released yet by uh, Hydros, but they are going to make one. Um, it's kind of not something you really should be using right now um, because it doesn't have the ability to know how long it takes for the rotations and the number of feedings. Um, so for this, I wouldn't really use it until you have a Coral View feeder and until they produce one. So that's what feeder is going to do. Uh, the clear filter uh, is pretty neat. Um, that's something that the uh, Coral View company distributes. They distribute clear filters and their filter rollers. And again, you can base it off of a water level um, to turn it off and on, which is really neat. Uh, again, has the same settings and the advanced settings. Um, again, these are specific to a specific product. So you're not going to use the clear, obviously, if you have a different filter roller. But essentially, you could use it to turn off your filter roller based off of a level input. Um, so let's say your water level was to rise, you want to turn off your filter roller. That's what this is for. Next is chiller, which is the opposite of the heater. Um, you have an on temp and an off temp, and typically you're going to have this only turn on and off during higher uh, values. So what's different about the uh, chiller is it actually has a run pass max time. So you can actually um, have it run past an on time for a specific amount of time. Um, haven't really used this on a chiller, but that's what it's there for. Um, notification level, again, this is a notification to tell you if the uh, temperature is too high or too low. Um, and you can set the specific type of notification levels of that particular uh, outlet. Calcium reactor uh, is pretty neat. It has its own programming for the if you had a calcium reactor. Um, so you can actually uh, pick, okay, we'll have a pH probe here. I want my reactor solenoid to turn off and on at a specific point. And then, of course, you can actually put in an alkalinity input from an alkatronic, and then you can actually have it turn off and on if the alkalinity gets too high. Um, and you can actually have it turn on um, if the alkalinity was to get too low. Uh, this is where your CO2 solenoid output goes. Um, and again, active in modes. Most of the inputs are going to all have the same programming. Uh, again, there's your notification and your maximum min time if you wanted to delay the uh, solenoid so it's not constantly turning off and on. And that's what those are for at the bottom. Next one's a calc reactor. Uh, it'll turn on off your um, calcium uh, or stir based on uh, the pH. You can actually put a pH probe inside the stir, and if it gets a specific um, amount, you can have it shut off. Uh, there's a number of different things you can do here. You can put the pH probe inside the tank itself, and if the calc was to, for some reason, raise your tank pH too high, you can have it shut off. Um, this is where you would put your stir, and then you can have it stir during a specific time. So how long, how many times you want it, how often. That's very useful for a calc stir. So a couple uh, interesting things here that you can add to your calc reactor. Protein skimmer is going to be used very often. Um, it's also a very uh, simple program. Again, water level, if you wanted to put a skimmer water level inside the cup. That's where you would put it right here, an output device, and then it would allow you to shut off the skimmer. Ozone generator, um, you know, it bases it off of ORP, which is generally what ozone is based off of. Again, turns off and on uh, the ozone based off the ORP input. If you had an ORP probe, um, you know, nothing too difficult on the ozone. 
So constants, uh, if you want just uh, the outlet to be on and off all the time. And you can actually program the constants to turn off and on during certain points. So for instance, if I had a device like a, a pump and I just wanted it to be on all the time and I did not want it to be on during specific modes, I can turn them off right here. And again, you can also do a depends on as well. Uh, generic is going to be a little more complex and we're gonna get into this in some of the uh, more advanced programming um, tutorials. But a generic allows you to use all different types of inputs, as many as you want, um, and then read off of them and active uh, based off of those. And that's where the combiner comes in. So this is more advanced programming. We're not going to really get into this in this tutorial. But essentially, this is if something is happening and something else is happening, and you wanted something else to happen based on multiple things happening, that's where the combiner is. You'll notice that most of the outlets that we've shown in this tutorial uh, have the ability to depend on a, one other outlet, but what if you wanted to depend on multiple outlets? Then you'd have to use the combiner uh, with a generic type um, outlet, which is what these are. And again, we're gonna get into that in different tutorials. So this is again, just a very basic, uh, showing of what you can do with the hydros outlets so hopefully you enjoyed the video hopefully you learned a little bit from it and uh, if you haven't liked or subscribed to the channel go ahead and like and subscribe thank you for watching and i hope you have a wonderful day